So good evening to the Israelis, good afternoon to the East Coasters, good morning to the West Coasters, spread all over the globe on this Zoom call. It's really, really lovely to see so many familiar faces that we haven't seen in a long time. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sigal Yaniv Feller. I'm the executive director of the Jewish Funders Network in Israel. I'm also a lifelong environmentalist and have been in the philanthropic environmental field for over 20 years now um, and happily leading the Green Funders Forum over these past few years together with Sherry and with Marla and with Gil um, and we're really happy to host all of you today for this uh, for this program. Um, we call this special pre-Rosh Hashanah session um, to be able to share spotlights on new philanthropic initiatives and opportunities for action on climate and the environment. I think it's very clear to all of us that climate has become an issue, that we're all feeling its impact. This past year has been extreme with everything going on on a global level. And I think we all feel that there's something that needs to be done and that we can all play a part in this. Hopefully a lot of us can play a part in this together. And that's part of why we're trying to address this as a community and try to figure out the role that philanthropy can play together and create more meaningful collaborations to group to just reach a uh, longer lasting and more impactful uh, effect on, on climate change. I'm proud to share that JFN um, is stepping up in its effort to engage the philanthropic community on environmental and climate issues. The Green Funders Forum is now our biggest peer network um, inside JFN, and it's open to both funders and foundation professionals who want to learn more, who want to get tools, who want to get advice, and who want to collaborate on these issues. I want to thank the leadership and support of several members who are here on this call and have been walking this path with us, the Stein Family Foundation, the Fox Foundation, the Moore Foundation, and the Blazer Foundation, who really stepped us with our dream to take the Green Funders Forum to the next level and to be much more strategic in the programming that we develop for you, site visits, mappings, programming, tours in Israel, so we can really bring something relevant to all of you and help you move forward in your philanthropic steps in this direction. Um, we also, I want to remind you that we offer free consultation meetings to help you according to your interest and to figure out what the best path is for you. And we're very happy to continue to make collaborations and shidduchs with anyone you might be interested to meet around these issues. Um, Gil Yaakov, who's with us here and will be taking the mic from me in a minute, has joined us as the Green Funders Forum Project Manager but he's been working in the environmental field almost as long as I am, maybe even longer. I've known him for many, many years, growing from the field and up, from leading environmental organizations and consulting to foundations. And he's now heading the Green Funders Forum. And he's currently working on mapping the field on two levels. And these mappings are gonna be, of course, available to you and hopefully be useful in your decision-making process, both mapping what the philanthropic community is doing but also mapping what the organizations and the nonprofits are doing. So you can really be much more focused in your decisions and making decisions according on where you can collaborate or where there's attention missing. Um, so feel, feel free, please, to contact Gil, share information, share dilemmas, and use his expertise and connections in the field um, so we can really help you move forward. In today's session, we'll um, spotlight some of the many new exi exciting philanthropic initiatives to impact climate change and the environment. I hope and invite you to take inspiration for action, create new connections, and learn more from our speakers and discussions. You can feel free to use the chat. We'll be monitoring it throughout the Zoom, and we'll be making sure that we see your questions and relate to them. So without further ado, I'm handing it over to Gil Yaakov our um, project manager in the Green Funders Forum to guide us through this session. Go ahead, Gil. Thank you, Sigal. Uh, it's a pleasure to do it together. Uh, many people know that it's a pleasure to do things with you in general. Uh, I'm really happy to see the growing interest and in action, uh, growing numbers and people attending and also taking new, new steps and uh, learning more on what to do. Uh, so I'm really excited to have the conversation, this conversation with you, and I hope uh, I'm going to meet you soon, either uh, on mapping the field calls that I'm going to contact some of you who are funding in the field 
and learn more about what you do. Also meet others in consultations and hopefully also collaborations. And for those of you who missed our previous sessions, I really invite you to watch the recordings. They're available also on the chat and on JFN's website. And I think for today, we're gonna really touch uh, new initiatives. Um, I also wanna invite you in this opportunity for those of you who are in Israel to join on October 28th. It's gonna be an exciting event. Uh, the Climate March is taking place in Tel Aviv with thousands, even dozens of thousands of young people marching in the streets three days or four days before the national elections. And we're gonna have a session that is called Walk the Talk. So we can really get some inspiration from the young generation and uh, join their action uh, together. So I really invite you, those of you who are in Israel, whether living or visiting. Uh, so, and the details are in the chat. So today our speakers will really highlight a potential for large scale impact and opportunities for all of you to really step in, work together or gain some inspiration for your own actions. Uh, we'll spotlight new initiatives and collaborations, both from new and veteran funders and foundations of all sizes. We will also have time for Q and A's after each speaker and time at the end of the session for brief spontaneous sharing from some of you towards the end as time allows. So stay tuned and please use the chat for Q and A's. Uh, I'm really happy to open this session by sharing a new really wide scale initiative uh, that is called the, coalition, the, the Jewish Climate Co Leadership Coalition. Jewish Climate Leadership Coalition, uh, which was launched just a few days ago on Thursday. I think before uh, saying what it is, I want to show a short video uh, that really explains what's the scale of this initiative in the Jewish world, mostly in North America and also in Israel. So in a minute, I'll show you the video and we'll start from there our conversation and hopefully more uplifted. <laughs> so, here it is. Hope you can see it. And let's. Recent changes in the climate are unprecedented in thousands of years. It is indisputable that human activities are causing climate change, making extreme climate events more frequent and severe. The climate crisis is real, and it is here. Nearly one third of Americans lived through a climate disaster last summer. The impact does not affect all of us equally. Those in our society with less power and fewer resources, already more vulnerable, are often hardest hit. Jewish values compel us to confront this crisis, and our commitment to Jewish community compels us to do so together. Acknowledging the existential threat and moral urgency of the climate crisis, 20 national and international umbrella Jewish organizations have come together in our commitment to climate action, forming the Jewish Climate Leadership Coalition. Our coalition represents major Jewish organizations engaging millions of people of all ages and backgrounds across the world. Together, we recognize the urgency of the climate crisis and our obligation to do more. We commit to climate action. We commit to climate action. We, we commit, commit to, to climate, climate action. action. This winter, as we head into the first to be shot of a new seven-year street to cycle, we will release our climate action plans. With commitments from each of our organizations. We will continue to meet regularly and to report publicly on our activities, accomplishments, and commitments each year. We invite Jewish organizations everywhere to join us. Join us. Sign on to the coalition and create your own climate action plan. Our goal is for hundreds of Jewish organizations to participate so that we can take collective action on this critical issue. We're here to support you in leading climate action in your Jewish community. The Jewish people have a long history. Our ancestors endured suffering and calamity and then rose to meet the next challenge. 
It is our generation's imperative to confront this existential crisis together with communities across the world. I want to thank Chazon for rallying the Jewish organizational world behind this great banner. Our children and grandchildren need us. Our children and grandchildren need us. Our children and our grandchildren need us. So let's come together to take action. Okay, so uh, some good news to start with. And uh, as you see, there are 20 founding members, including JFN in this Jewish Climate Leadership Coalition. Uh, Chazon is leading the coalition and uh, these organizations really recognize the existential threat and moral urgency of the climate crisis and commit to taking action. All coalition members commit to developing climate action plans and uh, engaging their constituents, constituencies and also uh, taking on the ground actions to reduce their own footprint. To support uh, this coalition, there are plenty of ways for us to engage in action. Some of them include uh, the Climate uh, Action Fund, which is a fund both for loans and grants. Uh, for implementation for all these organizations that are members in the coalition, but also asking questions to our uh, grantees and, and really uh, lobbying the Jewish community to join this important effort. So if you want to have uh, more information on this, you can visit Chazan's website. I'm going to share it on the chat. And for today, I, we wanted to highlight JFN's role as well in this initiative. And therefore I invite uh, Rabbi Rebecca Sirbo, which is JFN's executive vice president, just to say a few words about JFN's commitment to mobilize the, the philanthropic community around this issue. So uh, Rebecca, we're very happy that you were taking this leadership on this issue and, uh, and look forward to hear what you have to say on it. Great, thank you, Gil. Shalom, thank you for joining us today, everybody. The Jewish people have proven resourcefulness and ability to address formidable challenges throughout our history. The challenge of climate change may constitute a unique opportunity for joint action that would benefit the entire world and help create a renewed sense of mission for the Jewish people. Jews from across the globe could take on a task that transcends narrow Jewish interests, that of building an ecologically and socially responsible world, a true tikkun olam. Climate change is also a burning issue for young people worldwide. It's an opportunity for collaboration between Israel and world Jewry. The climate crisis may become an opportunity for the Jewish people to heal its internal rifts through a joint effort on behalf of all of humanity. A critical study by McKinsey concludes that it's time for philanthropy to step up in the, flight, in the fight against climate change, increasing the relatively small sums to address the problem. A recent Center for Effective Philanthropy report concludes that despite the urgency of climate change and the narrowing window for action, philanthropic funding to address climate change remains very limited. Total giving by foundations and individuals focused on climate change mitigation represents less than 2% of total global giving, according to Climate Works Foundation. While there is evidence of increased momentum in recent years, more action is needed to match the scale of the climate crisis. Global funders peer networks have recently decided to mobilize the, in, in the international philanthropic community. WINGS and the Philanthropic European Association are just a few. Their actions, along with the growing interest of our members, inspire JFN to take a stand on the burning issue of climate change and mobilize the Jewish philanthropic community to strategic action. JFN is proud to join the Jewish Climate Leadership Coalition, aiming to mobilize Jewish communities everywhere in climate action and committed at the highest levels of the organization. We will offer our network programming, resources, collaborations, and more. 
We will also gradually reduce our footprint at events and conferences. We've already begun in our conference planning. The Green Funders Forum is spearheading this effort in JFN, and I thank you all for your interest and passion for making a difference. I hope to see you at the upcoming JFN International Conference, which will be March 19th through 21st in Phoenix, Arizona, where we will set the stage for more in-person learning and collaborative opportunities. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Rebecca. So it's uh, good to start with good news, and I see some comment in the chat that since the launch, uh, 40 more organizations joined the coalition. So uh, it is a sign of gaining uh, momentum. So thank you, Rebecca, again. And uh, thank you. And now we're gonna move to our next speakers. Uh, in this session, we'll, we're gonna highlight several initiatives by different uh, foundations and funders. Uh, uh, usually it, all of them are big scale initiatives. And all of them have some angle of uh, participation and collaboration that you can take uh, upon yourselves. And you can definitely contact either the speakers or us after the, uh, the presentations. And we'll have time for Q&A. So I'm happy to invite um, a new meaningful voice in the philanthropic uh, uh, community at the moment on climate change, Karen Karp. Karen is the Associate Director for the Israel operations of the Diane and Guilford Glazer Foundation. And Karen has extensive backgrounds uh, both in the private uh, sector, uh, sorry, uh, the non, not private sector, the third sector, and also municipal and national uh, uh, sphere. On, she has an MA in, in public policy. And Karen will share with us opportunities for cross-sectoral action on climate change. Uh, namely the Israeli Climate Forum Initiative established by President Herzog. So uh, this is really exciting, Karen, and I think it's one of the main venues today to create new initiatives that can really um, break the ceiling of the environmental and climate issues uh, in Israel and beyond. So Karen, the floor is yours, and I'm gonna also share a presentation. Thank you, Gail. Hi, everybody. It's great to see you all. Um, the, the Glazer Foundation, uh, we started engaging in this area um, without any expertise, and I wouldn't call ourselves experts yet, uh, but, but from the understanding that this is the future um, and uh, that there's an importance for us to, to engage in this space as well. Um, we also understood very fast that uh, we need to get our, our toes wet along the process, along the learning process, um, and that, um, that you know, we couldn't just learn everything and then, and then start engaging because it's so complex and so broad. Um, and after a few months of legwork, and many meetings, including with Gil and Marla and other colleagues here on the call, Andy, and uh, I think I saw Dalit and Tali that's not here. Um, we really, you know, try to, to see where, where would be the good places for us to start. Um, and at the same timing, um, the president of Israel announced that they were going to um, uh, initiate the presidential climate forum of Israel in partnership with uh, the Life and Environment uh, Organization. Um, and we felt that this was a good fit for us, uh, both trying to look at very broad um, impact and also as far as policy is concerned. Um, so maybe a few words about, about the presidential forum and you know, I'll give a very brief explanation of what the forum is, is trying to achieve. Um, yeah, you could you could put, put it up already if you want. So it really was born out of the declaration in Glasgow um, to reach by 250 um, zero net emissions. And of course, the environmental movement also has um, its uh, you know its uh, plans and and uh, suggestions of looking at 2030, which is just around the corner. The goal of of the forum is really to translating game-changing initiatives, both new as well as, as uh, existing initiatives into reality 
with the significant sponsor sponsorship um, and backing of uh, the president. Um, and the, the, new, the real nuance is the cross-sectorial and collaboration of the ability to bring everybody together um, to speak about the issues around the, ta the same tables. Um, so both looking at the mitigation and the adaptation, both the policy steps toward the reduction as well as the local and national preparedness. Um, they went into the forum was initiated, really began working this past January, so it hasn't been a full year yet. Um, but the way they worked is they reviewed the, the specific content areas, mapped the challenges, um, and, and started um, detecting the impactful courses of action for the forum, which was very, very broad. Um, and then translating these into policy and, re and regulation recommendations, as well as modeling in the field. Um, as part of that process, um, currently there are 65 initiatives, both new and older, um, and out of which um, there will be a selection of a few. So maybe just to go over the forum clusters, just to kind of um, showcase a bit of the broad work that they're doing. Um, energy and, uh, and uh, industry, um, these have far reaching implications in periphery, in the Arab sector as well, uh, urban spaces, Israel's demography and projections. We all know that you know, cities are existent and the future and um, the need for to develop sustainable livable spaces. Uh, food, as an example to translate, um, uh, national food security policies um, to local and communal levels. Um, this also includes nature-based solutions um, that are not in practice um, in large scale in Israel yet. Uh, education and culture to engage new audiences and sectors in this conversation. Uh, health, wealth of vulnerable populations. Here there is a lot of work um, uh, that can be developed including new approaches, uh, new policies that need to be based upon those approaches um, on local and communal levels, um, as well as interventions. And there's a lot of interesting work going on there. Regional cooperation and security. And this is also an area that our foundation felt comfortable to start with as well, and also the ability of bringing new players um, into this uh, field. Um, um, and the president, of course, is a catalyst for this internationally. Um, the green economy um, with great potential here for development as well, as, as well as uh, in the area of financial to tools and others, and consumption and waste reduction. Um, so uh, currently, there are 65 initiatives so it's really all over the map, out of which there'll be a handful selected by certain criteria that will continue, that have the most potential um, as far as broad impact and policy change in Israel um, that will continue to be supported as well by the presidential forum. Um, and uh, hopefully this will continue for, for the remainder of uh, the president's uh, tenure in office. Um, and hopefully as an institutional feature of the president's house as probably one of the most stable um, places um, in uh, the Israeli government today. Um, so I welcome you. There are many opportunities in the field. Happy to, to speak, engage, learn together. Um, I think that's it for me, uh, Gil. So if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Karen. Um, I have to say that following up on the on the Cl Israeli Climate Forum, there are plenty of uh, really uh, there is readiness of quite a few projects uh, to go ahead, and some of them really require uh, some of our help, you know, to strategize and get it to the final level of uh, implementation. So I'm really happy to open up for questions if you have. Any questions? And if you want to write in the chat, or if you have like a very short question that you want to open your mic and ask, and ask that I'm happy to do it. And in the meanwhile, while you do it, I have a question actually. 
Um, I'm really curious uh, for, for as a new foundation, as a foundation new to the field, do you have any lessons to share with those considering how to start? Uh, it's, it's quite a, as you, as you saw in the presentation, there are so many fields and you have, you have a big challenge. So what are your lessons uh, going through a year or even more uh, as a new funder in the field? I would say the first is our understanding that the environmental movement in the whole field is very different than any other civil society engagement that we've had up to date. Um, the character, the DNA, the issues, and that's something that just, you know, meeting and understanding the field is really important. Um, and it's also challenging for us to understand, to understand this as we go along. Um, I would say that the second thing is that, that, that there's a feeling that, um, that there's a lot yet to, to be developed um, and that there are a few very uh, committed and strong uh, philanthropic partners that have been in the field for quite a while. Um, and there's plenty of room for, for more. Um, and I think because it's such a cross, uh, you know, cross kind of cross sectorial, cross issue area, there are a lot of things that can be intertwined, whether it's an education um, and working with youth or whether it's in the policy level or health and et cetera. So it's really, for us, it's also a, a challenge and kind of an ongoing exercise to, to put on that lens and take it off as well. Um, yeah. Understand them. And, and um, how do you see the role of uh, philanthropy moving forward with the, especially with the, the Israeli Climate Forum? I think that it's really being able to be a catalyst for initiatives that, um, that need that additional support um, to, e I mean, it depends either develop a model and the proof of concept um, or also you know, to, to, to foster and develop the capabilities needed for something that is so broad, um, that many a time is lacking in very small organizations um, as well. I totally understand. So um, do you have any questions? Someone else wants to add a question. Is there any activity aimed at educating the public on the climate change challenge? So yes, there is that one of the clusters is also, um, and there are a few very interesting um, initiatives there of how to engage also with, with publics and, and sectors that aren't part of this discussion. Gail, maybe you wanna give a, a concrete example or two where we could do that offline as well. Okay, so inside uh, the cluster of uh, uh, education, uh, the, the, it's, it's a long name, not just education, but public education, religion, and things like that. There are several initiatives. Some of them focus on specific uh, sectors in Israel. For example, how to mobilize for action the religious sector. Uh, some of them, uh, the Arab sector. And there are also initiatives working on how to create a joint campaign uh, that would help the public change habits and also mobilize for action. But I think one of the later conversations we'll have today will actually touch a, an opportunity to engage in a more, uh, let's say, advocacy-oriented uh, policy. The, the Israeli Climate Forum is really trying to engage several sectors together. Uh, so uh, some, of, some of the sectors need to change. Some of the industry needs to change. Some of the uh, ministries need to change, and the way to do it sometimes is outside of this cross-sectoral table uh, in campaigns and public uh, uh, awareness. So there are initiatives, and we're going to touch them a bit later. But uh, if anyone yes. wants to go Bill, deeper, you have, you have three questions in the chat. Yes. So if any if anyone wants to dive deeper on that, so that's great. Uh, we'll do it also uh, offline. To whom do we donate support Israel Climate March on October 28th? Uh, so the leading organization is Green Course, Megamai Ruka. 
uh, is one of your goals to enable grants to companies developing solutions. We see many companies that need basic funding, um, et cetera. So maybe I, I, I can reply to that, that I think part, the main focus of, uh, of the Green Funders Forum at the moment is to really step up the philanthropic action. We can see also based on the McKinsey report that there is much more funding going to impact investment initiatives companies, even though it's still underfunded, but the, the policy aspect of things is rather, um, it's left behind and philanthropic engagement. I mean, you can find funders and even foundations working on this issue uh, in, in, on investments, but not working philanthropically. And we try to give the tools for funders to connect these two uh, venues. So our expertise is more in the philanthropic action, but we're happy also to connect people to other uh, means of action. Uh, so this is my reply to that. Uh, I think- You have gonna... two more remarks in the chat, Gil. Yeah, I see. Um, uh, there is a remark by, by JNF Canada uh, funded a Climate Solutions Prize in Israel, $1 million per year. So there are initiatives. And actually part of what I'm doing in the mapping is to try map what is going on philanthropically and give some information and data on the overall funding for companies. But the main focus uh, here is more philanthropically. Just to scroll back for those of you interested. Yeah. Yeah, to get involved with American politics, Jennifer's email is there. She's very involved. She's here on the call, and you could feel free to be involved. Yeah, and if, if you can help, if you can assist Jennifer with, uh, if you see any organization on the list that you're involved with, uh, then feel, please feel free to, you know, connect. This is part of the networking. People can ask uh, one another. And towards uh, the end of this yeah. Zoom call, we'll let others share as well. So we'll get back to that. Okay, so I think we'll stop with that. And uh, I'm sure there are many more questions and we'll also have time to share. Um, okay, so I'm moving now to our next speaker. Uh, in this part, we will really spotlight funders and foundations collaborations, uh, which is also a very important uh, way of acting, especially with uh, such a big, you know, uh, scale issue. So our first speaker uh, for this part is Andy Benica. She's the program officer uh, of, for environment at Yad Nadiv uh, for quite a while. Andy served also as a consultant to public and commercial entities on sustainability and environmental regulation in Israel and the UK. Uh, Andy headed the sustainability department in the consulting division of PwC Israel. And she holds a BA in public policy and also MSc in environmental policy and regulation from the London School of Economics. So Andy will share some exciting collaborations to build uh, the movement from the ground, uh, create more activism, more uh, initiatives uh, that are grassroots and also including the Arab society and also a new co cooperation with the Ministry of Environment to adapt Israeli cities to climate change with plenty of room for further action philanthropically. Uh, please feel free again to write in the chat and if we missed any question, we'll try to uh, come back to it later on. So Andy, the floor is yours. Hi, hi everybody. It's a pleasure to be here this evening and Gil, thank you for that. Uh... <laughs> Very detailed bio. I haven't heard it for a while. <laughs> Makes it's good sense. to remember it's what you did. <laughs> yeah, you are important. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so um, I was told to try and make it really brief today. I have a lot to say, but I'm, I'm really going to focus on these two initiatives that Gil mentioned. Uh, but before that, just a quick uh, few words about uh, Yad Nadiv's environment program. Um, it's uh, we we uh, like to think of ourselves working strategically in the field of environment in Israel, and our portfolio is divided to major initiatives. So every few years we choose to focus on uh, a certain field and try to uh, achieve systemic impact there. 
and we try to do that with 80% of our portfolio and the rest or the the rest the uh, the other 20% we try to devote to field building looking at the environment movement to try to make sure that we have the right organic the, the strong and potent and uh, effective organizations to work with within our strategic uh, initiatives. So to name a few of our other um, strategic initiatives that I'm not gonna discuss today is our um, a marine, marine uh, conservation initiative. We have um, a, st a strategy within um, an, a previous strategy um, to advance biodiversity, which we were engaged a few years in for, for several years. And right now uh, we have also uh, going on a river rehabilitation strategy, including also a hands-on large river rehabilitation uh, project um, in, in the north at the Tsipori River. Um, so you can see, I've mentioned nature conservation, uh, but we also, uh, Try, try to put in our portfolio also urban urban sustainability, and that I'll, I'll uh, relate uh, in, in my presentation. So today I'm gonna bring two examples of initiatives that we are involved in, and we're not alone in them. So when, when I say not alone, I mean that um, we collaborate with other uh, foundations. And in the, in the second example here, we also seek a collaboration with the government, uh, uh, with the government and municipalities. So the first, the first example is of um, two um, new tracks that uh, uh, we um, helped uh, initiate and are involved in currently, uh, trying to leverage on existing assets of something that is called the Shelley Fund, uh, which is a veteran fund that was funded uh, founded a long time ago um, by some. Uh, veteran foundations that are, some of them are still uh, active and some are not in Israel. And I'm talking about the Cummings and the Roth foundations that previously um, got together to, um, to, spur, to spur activism, to spur grassroots environmental activism in Israel by uh, micro-granting. And this platform was going on for many, many years and it is actually responsible for many successful um, local initiatives trying to uh, fight uh, unsustainable development. So a lot of the, the you know, good positive things that you hear on the news that uh, activists manage to save um, un unsustainable development on beaches or in green spaces, protecting green spaces, uh, sustainable transport and so on. These are things that were funded uh, historically by the Shelley Fund. And it was um, as as the, those foundations pull pull back from uh, from funding environmental issues, uh, the Shelley Fund went on a break for a couple of years, and then uh, several foundations, including the Seba Family Foundation and uh, and Yada Nadiv, and also the Stein Foundation, um, decided to to put it back again on track. So there's all there's that track of micro granting. Uh, and since this platform is working so well, um, spurring activism in Israel, which is so important to have these bottom-up activities, we uh, thought that um, it's an opportunity to, to do more. And we learned from, from the experience of hundreds of initiatives that, that were funded that there's a gap between funding micro giving micro grants to very local initiatives and funding established NGOs, which foundations usually usually do. And in that gap, um, we have high potential new environmental initiatives that are, let's say, in the beginning of their way. They're not local. They have a lot of potential. And we thought to create an accelerator that will spur innovation. Now, by innovation, we we were pretty um, pretty precise in what we mean. We meant, first of all, because it, we didn't want to create competition for the existing NGOs. As you know, the cake is uh, is not very big for environmental movements. So we didn't want to create competitions and we wanted to spur innovation in terms of financial models. So these initiatives will have a sustainable financial model 
uh, in terms of collaborating with government, um, making sure that they are focused in what they're doing so it's easier for them to uh, to get some philanthropic funding and so on. Um, so that's the major the major target. And then um, also new fields of focus, new environmental fields of focus that aren't being taken care of other NGOs and also new audiences like the Arab community and the Haredi community, the Orthodox community, which are not very involved as citizens in, in uh, environmental sustain and sustainability activities. Um, and what the program offers is basically a very extended envelope meaning that the envelope, the support envelope, is maybe even bigger than the direct seed money for, uh, for the initiatives. And to sum up, we had a, a successful first round with six initiatives uh, that uh, have finished the first year. Some of them are, are um, still participating in the program for a second year, getting additional funding for the second year. And all of them, we could say, achieved some progress, some of them even major progress. What we mean is that they came up with a more precise uh, logic model, theory of change, which is very important, you know, to, to be able to be successful and, and effective, uh, you have to be focused. And that was one of one of the, um, the achievements and the value that initiatives um, get from the program. Uh, also organizational setup, you know, understanding what you need, what what your exact exact requirements are in terms of coordination and management and resources. And also, of course, as I mentioned, the financial model. So this was the first round. This is the, the first uh, um, the cohort and we are moving on to to more cohorts. I think we have also a, um, the program has an, an assessment um, a research that is that is uh, following the activities. And I think this is uh, a great way to spur innovation in, in the environmental movement. Um, now, the, the the additional track that we thought from the experience with the Shelley Fund was that we tried to outreach for Arab environmental activism throughout the years. And we realized that um, we'll have to adapt uh, the tools that we use in order to spur activism in the Arab community uh, to make them more fit to, to those needs. We had uh, um, a lot of Arab applications uh, and they, they weren't competitive enough. It's, it, it was just, we need, there's a lot more of work to be done there. Uh, and I don't want to get into what the reasons are. It's, it's, it's complex, uh, uh, but we definitely feel that um, we need more Arab activism, wow. more Arab environmental activism, and there's a new program for that. So um, the partners in the Shelly Fund are basically now uh, partnering in um, in supporting three tracks of of this program, uh, and the third, as I'm saying, as I said, is is dedicated to uh, cultivating Arab environmental activism. It's a new program. Uh, it also will pro will provide tailored envelope with direct funding for the initiatives, and it will obviously have to include a variety of uh, of partnerships with other NGOs because um, we'll have to uh, push and catalyze this involvement of uh, of local activists. So that that will require local um, local partnerships with local NGOs, maybe not environmental. Um, so that's it for for this example, uh, and Gil, can we move to the next slide? Okay, so this is another um, another initiative. It's We see it as a large initiative. Yad and Adiv, uh, along with some other foundations, I have to admit, um, um, we, we've been looking at what, what can be our main focus in our climate change um, strategy for the next few years. And um, because the other Nadiv's mandate is to, to do its work in the environmental program uh, for to increase um, welfare in Israel, uh, then, then our focus was on climate change adaptation uh, because Israel is a small country and it is at the front line. It it has a it it is in the front line of climate change. It's going to be hot here. Even the, the temperature is going to have already been uh, rising far more than in other places. 
because of our climate and geographic location, it's going to be very hot here. And cities, you know, the 90% of Israelis live in cities are going to be at the front line. And this means that uh, concrete action is needed to adapt our cities to, to climate change. And that can be done by basically cooling the cities, mostly by cooling. Um, also, there is um, water management and getting ready for extreme weather events. And also sea, sea rise is going to affect some, some uh, cities on the coastline. But the main issue is definitely going to be high temperatures, high heat, heat waves, longer heat waves, heavy heat waves. And cities will have to be made cooler. And that means shading. <laughs> I'm sure that uh, each and every one of you has tried to attempted to walk in August in uh, unshaded cities. And that, that becomes unbearable <laughs> slowly and gradually. And we'll have to have more trees. So that's the idea. The idea is, is to make sure that we'll have more trees in Israeli cities. And luckily, uh, government makes steps for, uh, towards that. Uh, the, these numbers, there are government decisions. The first one is the, the first one is the government decision on climate change, climate change mitigation. Um, there are budgets for that, and so, until not not they they've made their decisions starting in uh, in 2018. Um, budgets weren't that big, but now they're increasing, and they weren't very focused on exactly the, the make they were making plans and supporting some municipalities in climate change uh, strategic planning but th but that was more or less the the activities that that were carried out but what happened in the last uh, during the covid uh, period um there was some work uh, being done um in the prime minister office uh, regarding shading uh by urban forestry and that uh, resulted in a government decision 1020 to, that was released in January this year to take this topic strategically and make sure that Israeli plants Israel plants many more trees uh, on streets. But that um, that's that's good. That's nice. Uh, also, there are some budgets along the way when when we have a government and a budget. Uh, but the issue is that there's a huge gap between this willingness, the targets that were made, which are very important. But at the end, it's the municipalities that will have to uh, spear the work <laughs> and do all that. And um, capacity is very, very low. Um, the professional knowledge and know-how, best practices, municipalities in Europe are miss, missing all that. And that's a major opportunity for philanthropy. So what we decided to do is uh, to, to establish an urban forestry and shading center uh, we, we're going to partner with that with the Bracha Foundation that is a veteran. Uh, it's, it's, it has been looking in, in this area of shading for many, many years. And now it's a great opportunity for us to partner together with the government and establish this center that will support the municipalities through in, in the next few years to, to be able to implement more planting, tree protection, and start measuring and see that there's more shading in cities. Now, the great opportunity for the coming year, despite not having a government and not having uh, the budget, is the, the call for proposals that was made. It's just now on air. Uh, so 20 municipalities are going to receive funding, 25 million shekels, for uh, plan from planning, uh, planning their urban forestry strategies. And also, there are going to be some uh, uh, pilot projects in a few of them. And that's a very, very good start to start understanding what exactly is needed and to um, support these municipalities in implementation. I think that this is a very strategic way of looking at things. And this is a, an amazing spot for philanthropy to get involved and really do be part of concrete steps to mitigate, to uh, adapt and to actually deal with, with the results of climate change in Israel in the next few years. So I invite you all to hear about this more. Um, and I think you're gonna see some of this on the news as well, because there's a great buzz around this, because we're not in this uh, alone. The government is also um, pinpointed this topic as, as important. Um, and that's it, thank you. Thank you, Andy. Uh, very ambitious, of course. <laughs> um, 
I think uh, I think the main challenge for philanthropy, in my opinion, is uh, there are so many things to do. Um, and I, I wanted to ask you about your collaborations. How do you collaborate with who? Uh, can people approach you? You have a lot of experience over the years. So what is the what is your approach, Yadon Div approach towards collaboration? Okay, so first, because as I mentioned, Bracha Foundation was looking at the shading issues a long time ago in terms of planning and, and urban urban spatial planning, and I think that we there they were the first uh, to be approached and and to to start thinking of how we can um, uh, partner here together. Uh, but I think that as as we you know, there's a lot to do, as you said, and. Because we want to, we we want to really be at a spot where we can leverage our limited resources. We reach out for the government and try to see how we can assist um, when when they set up their mind in doing something that is we see as important. First, we try to push them a little more in that direction. <laughs> so we were supporting even the government decisions, and then the call for papers. We're involved in you know, lobbying, uh, quotation marks in lobbying these issues so they move forward. And then we look at what is missing, where the gap is. So now we see that municipalities are gonna be the, um, they're the change agents and they're, and they're gonna be, they are going to need most of the support because money is gonna come. And I think everybody here is familiar with the fact that our centralist government has great ideas great aspirations and you know in the in the in the, in the few years there was great funding as well even for the arab community but the thing is that that money doesn't drop in in the best way on the ground and i think in israel specifically and it's not something that you see maybe in other places um our board also <laughs> also learns about this all the time because it's it's a particular situation where municipalities lead lead the then it, they are the ones who need to, to take actions, not only them, that there are some national aspects to dealing with climate change. But when it comes, comes to adaptation and to resilience, I think it's all in the hands of municipalities. And when the government wants to do things, we have to partner with them. We have to see uh, what is needed to close the gaps of professionalism, of knowledge, best practices. We also know how to reach out to um, parallel organizations abroad like the um, let's I, I'm, I just well, I, I just set up a meeting with a founder and CEO of uh, something that is called the Sustainable Surfaces Coalition, uh, which which is a coalition of organizations that are basically doing the same thing, supporting municipalities and, and cities around the world to help them cool in, in their cooling strategies. Uh, so that's learning uh, and and partnering a lot with the government, a lot with municipalities. And of course, our, our uh, final and ultimate partners, which are the NGOs themselves. Um, yeah, and of course, I forgot to mention, and it's very important that this um, Center for Urban Forestry and, and Shading is going to be uh, established within the Israeli uh, Green Building um, Council. So it's a host, it's a hosting organization uh, that is going to um, establish with us this uh, operation. Okay, very, we hope it's gonna succeed, but I really believe it depends on everyone's uh, involvement. And I also hope that the Arab society track, which means uh, increasing uh, Arab society activism is gonna gain momentum. And I know some of the people on the call are interested specifically and how to work in the Arab society. So if you want more details on that, we can definitely help you after the call. Uh, I'm moving to the next speaker, unless anyone has a very urgent question. This would be our final speaker and then we'll open it up a bit for some uh, more spontaneous sharing. So thank you, Andy. Um, I'm really excited to invite uh, Marla Stein uh, probably most of you, if not all of you know Marla and her enthusiasm to the issue. Marla co-chairs the Green Fathers Forum. Uh, she's really a living force engine and also a thought partner. 
for mobilizing people, funders, and many others to action. Mara started her philanthropic journey around six and a half years ago and really de dedicated resources, time, and energy to making an impact uh, with her own giving, but also with the Green Funders Forum. Marla has, holds an MA in public policy and has a rich background in advocacy work, both in the US and Israel. And Marla will share a, a new funding collaboration on governmental policy and also a, an ex, a really interesting example of how a, maybe smaller scale funding can make an impact together. So Marla, I'm happy to invite you. Thank you, Gail. Great to see everybody. The problem in Israel's environment today is that we don't have a strong governmental policy that is serious about saving Israel from environmental destruction. Israel is a climate change hotspot. The world is talking about 1.5 degrees. We have already surpassed 1.5 degrees. We're just getting hotter and hotter. The way to change this is through strong government policy. We have too many cars on the road. The way to change this is through government policy. The Mediterranean is rising and it's full of plastic. The way to solve this is through strong government policy. We're a country full of sunshine and yet we have around 7% renewables. The way to solve this is through strong government policy. We need strong government policy and enforcement now. Obviously, the way to change government policy is to have a strong and effective lobby arm for the environmental movement that deals with government relations every day. I'm Marla, I'm Marla Stein, and with four fellow small strategic funders, we were able to come together and create the Green Lobby for the environmental movement. We did this just about nine months ago. And in that short amount of time, we have already had fantastic achievements. First, the Climate Act passed on the first reading on the Knesset floor. This is a tremendous achievement, especially considering the turbulent year that the Knesset had. And it's one of the only bills that passed that had the support of both the coalition and the opposition. Uh, this Climate Act will set the framework for Israel to reduce emissions and work towards adaptation in the climate crisis. The second achievement is that there is now a government decision to close the oil refineries in the Haifa Bay. Now, most of you on this call know that this has been a burning issue, no pun intended, on the uh, environmental agenda for several decades but the Green Lobby was able to step in to help coordinate, it, coordinate the players on the ground to make sure that the message is unified and to really bump this up to the, to the policymakers to make it happen, including coordinating uh, meetings with high level finance ministry officials and with Prime Minister Lapid. And in addition to this, the future buyers of the Haifa Bay are going to have to abide by very strict regulations to keep that area green. The third achievement is that the lobby was able to get rid of phosphate mining near the city of Arad. Now, again, there have been activists in the field on this issue for a long time, but again, the lobby was able to step in for added value and to bump this up to the national level and to make sure that the meetings with the national policymakers happened and they succeeded. And not only that, they took it to a higher level and now Israel is reevaluating its mining policy for the entire country, not just in the South. And the fourth achievement is that the lobby was able to fight back against polluting industry here in Israel. So using a kind of regulatory trick, uh, polluting industry in Israel wanted to delete the requirement to have stricter fuel against uh, higher fuel emissions. And the lobby was able to be very nimble and quick in lobbying against this. And so today polluting industry is being held to the, uh, the emission standards as designated by the Clean Air Act. 
And so this again is a very big achievement for the environmental movement here in Israel. So these are impressive results, but lest you think that the Green Lobby is taking a break while the Knesset is not in session right now, um, uh, I'm pleased to say that the lobby is continuing its work every day. As all of you are aware, we are in the middle once again of an election cycle and the Green Lobby is working along with other organizations on the ground to make sure that meetings are coordinated with every candidate running for in Knesset uh, in party lists to make sure that panels are happening, to make sure that questions are being posed so that all candidates are hearing the voice of the environmental movement. Second, the Green Lobby is working towards the COP27 Climate Change Summit. COP is the Conference of Parties. It's basically the international summit where governments from around the world come together to declare their commitment on working towards climate change. The Green Lobby is working to coordinate the Israeli NGO delegation that is going to be attending the COP conference. It, by the way, it's in our region this year. It's in Sharm el Sheikh in November. So uh, again, the Green Lobby is coordinating the NGO delegation from Israel, whose job it is to make sure that Israel is making commitments, uh, moving towards adapting and mitigating climate change. The Green Lobby is working now before the conference, will be there during the conference, and of course, after the conference as well, to make sure that these commitments are being held to. And third, the Green Lobby is positioning itself as the go-to resource for policymakers on climate change and all environmental issues. In other words, we will have a new Knesset at some point, and legislators that want to move forward on legislation and regulation and budgets regarding climate and environmental issues will have a one-stop shop to get all of the information to know what the next, next step should be. So the Green Lobby, again, is mapping and making sure that they are the resource in place for the policymakers. Now, in order to be very effective in influencing decision makers, we need the strong lobby that I was just referring to. We need grassroots activism. We need students and youth and adults out there making sure that policymakers hear from the public. But in addition to all of that, in order to be really effective, we need strong media coverage. Because for, uh, with all due respect to activism, and I'm proud to say that I am an activist on the ground, uh, with all of the work that takes place on the, on the ground, showing up and research and making sure things happen, none of that really matters unless we have media coverage. We need policymakers to be able to read in the news to be able to hear on the radio and on television every day issues in the environmental movement. So it's this triangle that makes it the whole thing effective. And we, make, we need to make sure that there is intensive media coverage. I'm working right now as a private funder. I am wanting to put together a strong collab, funder collaboration on media. I'm already held aside money from our foundation budget to make sure that that collaboration is going to be able to start in the coming months. Um, because I can't emphasize enough that we need this third leg of the triangle and we're not there quite yet. But if you're interested in joining this media effort, if you understand that having strong government policy is really vital in making sure that there's big scale movement on Israel and climate change, please message me now. Write me an email, send me a message in the chat, call me after this presentation and let me know that you want to be a partner in moving forward. We are going to be doing this and if you want to be part of it, the time is now. Thank you. Thank you, Marla. I think it's a very loud and clear message. Uh, I want to address some questions in the chat. Um, I think there are some questions about how to support this initiative if you're outside of Israel. So first, maybe I, I can uh, explain the way it works 
there is an umbrella organization called organization called life and environment it's a tax deductible for that's another question in the chat um, a nonprofit that actually coordinates the efforts of the environmental movement so the the government policy arm is in life and environment using the platforms of the organization to coordinate and collaborate so basically it's inside a, a, a an ngo um if you want to really we're in a closed conversation yeah so if we want to really bypass the lobby restriction most funders that actually support advocacy work in israel define it as policy work advocacy work uh, we marla is calling it lobby green lobby because she's here in israel but basically uh, it's advocacy work it's also putting up together the needed policies so it's possible also for funders outside of israel to support uh, uh, forming new policies um, also i see a questions first of all comments to marla um, let's see we'll share in a minute uh, some of your remarks that on on what you're doing uh, is there a way to donate for NGOs for education and advocacy as opposed to direct lobbying? So, of course, yes, if the answer is yes. <laughs> um, also, I want to say that there is a new, uh, new, co new funders collaboration on education. Uh, it's a collaboration between the Bracha Foundation, Azrieli Foundation, and the Adan Nadiv working um, really with high level officials um, on changing the curriculum and what's going on in the education system in a systemic way. And the organization that is leading the effort is the Heschel Center. The program is called Tevel. And there are many ways also to support this work, but in terms of education, uh, I think there are many ways to refer to education. Many, People see education in so many different ways. There's education for science, there's education for being, uh, um, for creating civil engagement. There's education in terms of uh, awareness of the public. So for each and every aspect of education, there is an address, but I have to say that some of the addresses on the ground, some of the organizations really need also capacity building. It's not just picking up on an organization that is ready to do the work, but rather has the connections, have you know, the expertise and they need uh, to build their capacity. This is also part of the mapping that I'm doing to really understand the capacity of the field. We need to understand that up until recently, only less than half percent of funding, of the funding, philanthropic funding in Israel, uh, went to climate and environment. So the organizations, started as as their opening position is quite small but we see some progress in the last year or two so i think my recommendation is also taking up on an issue not to think just of the project and campaign but also how can we fund and support the capacity building so we can go a long way with these initiatives um Okay, um, any other questions I'm missing? Let's see. And the, is there a foundation that as well? Sorry, I didn't hear, Marla. I was just saying, isn't there a third foundation in that initiative as well? Is the, if it's on education, it's Bracha Foundation, Azrieli, and Yada Nadiv. These are the foundation, and there's plenty of room to engage in action uh, if you're working on education since the education ministry declared that climate is going to be an overarching issue uh, this coming year so there are many ways really to to uh, uh, by the way some of our one of our intentions in the green funders forum is to really understand your personal interest and then to create subgroups so it's not going to be just discussions in zoom you know with a broad audience we're going to create more um intimate discussions for those of you who are interested in specific uh, uh, specific strategy or issue. Uh, the reason I, I wanted just to review those three foundations is because um, of course, 
Yada Nadiv and Bracha have been long-term funders in the environment. I just really wanted to give a shout out to Azrieli Foundation that has um, jumped on board. This is a great example of how it's not same old, same old here. Uh, collaborations are being formed. Foundations of all sizes are jumping in. We are delighted that Azrieli is uh, stepped up on this. Um, able to intersect with issues that they were already interested in. And it's a perfect example that there is room for everyone. And on the funder collaboration that I mentioned, I want to emphasize that we are five small strategic funders. And together, we were able to get that lobby arm going. So whether you're big or whether you're small, there really is room. Uh, another question was around uh, the Jewish Teen Funders Forum. Is it involving, involving climate change? So... I'm happy to share. It's called uh, actually Honeycomb. And Honeycomb, uh, I recently met also uh, Wayne Green, that is also is inside JFN, but working separately on the Honeycomb initiative. And they realized the momentum and the interest of Jewish teens. So they're developing some programs and uh, contents that are relevant uh, around climate teen engagement. And I have to say that the, one of the most influential movements in Israel in recent, let's say, year and a half or two is the Youth for Climate, much similar to the Strike for Future Climate happening uh, across the globe. There is a very growing movement of uh, teens. They're working voluntarily. Uh, they, get, they receive some guidance from Green Corps, but I think if someone is interested in even in a small scale, scale granting, uh, I think the Youth for Climate is really doing great work with decision makers. They're bringing many people and they need, you know, maybe sometimes small support is really relevant for these kind of initiatives. So that's also, uh, and I hope to share more of that on October 28th. If you want to actually see how the youth is mobilizing uh, other youth, it's a, it's a good showcasing of, uh, you, you're gonna join the climate march and you're gonna see the way they act. And we're also gonna have a conversation with them before the march itself. So I really invite you to join us uh, on October 28th. It's gonna be next to Tel Aviv Museum. And uh, definitely if you're interested in youth, then you have a board that wants to get involved, but we need some, material to get them up to speed. Uh, so I, so do we have uh, resources? So actually the purpose of doing the mapping, which I hope we can launch by maximum December, hopefully before, is to create this kind of handbook and resource. But if you don't want to wait till then, we do have some uh, presentations and things that we can share or even join a call. Uh, or a conversation to help you with that. And actually this is the purpose of the consultation. If you're, everyone is at a certain place, a different place in the internal conversation. And if you need some information and you want to think together in an intimate conversation, I'm really happy to do it. And I've already done it with several and I see results. So please uh, feel free to contact me really. Um, Let's see. Um, I'm going to add some links to the chat for the organizations that we mentioned. Thank you, Emmett. That's a good, uh, that's a good remark. Uh, any other questions that we see? I think, meanwhile, what we can do is we really want to give a few minutes. We don't have a lot of time for more um, spontaneous sharing. I invite you either to write in the chat uh, something interesting, maybe we can pick up also from the things you already wrote and we can open the mic. I invite you to do it uh, for a minute. It's not saying the whole thing, but rather sparking the interest uh, around specific initiatives that you have. And maybe I see that, um, I see that, um, wait a minute. Let's see who wanted to share uh, about a similar strategy. Just a minute. I'm glad that many people are writing in the chat now. I have to find them. <laughs> uh, well, while Gil is looking, I just want to yeah. say that, um, 
back to Karen uh, Karp's presentation from the Diane and Guilford Glazer Foundation. I mean, she mentioned that it's a, it's a huge issue. Uh, it's difficult to know where to get started. Uh, I think Karen mentioned that like, they didn't have, it wasn't like the classic issue for the Glazer Foundation. And I just wanna just say, uh, Gail is being modest. I've heard from many, many people that have sat with Gail. It's a perfect opportunity to get an overview of the environmental movement and the issue areas. Um, it's part of the impact of our personal philanthropy is really uh, funding Gil's position with the idea of making Gil and the Green Funders Forum a resource for the funder community. And again, I want to emphasize that there is no obligation. Um, it's a free consultation. You don't have to obligate to start funding. It's just a way to start trying to overcome um, the overwhelmingness of this uh, wicked problem. Thanks, Martha. <laughs> Did you want to share something about the, the Planetech uh, conference? Yeah, please do. Maybe just unmute yourself and mention, say a few words. Hi, so <laughs> I don't know, I'm sure, I mean, I, I don't have too much to do with it, but um, there's a Planetech conference in terms of, Erin, your, your comment about supporting, and, and Jeff, supporting um, the innovation happening in Israel around climate tech. So there's a conference on Wednesday here, but I also think uh, Planet Tech as an organization has been doing really good things in building the ecosystem that allows um, companies to really expand and look at the ecosystem at large around how can we utilize the experience, bring experienced CEOs and bring funding to um, things that have been um, taken from the um, university's tech transfer arms, uh, really merge them with good leadership and um, really understanding the issues to go global. And it's really, I don't know everyone here how much you're involved, but uh, it really, it, it's, it's, a, it's quite a, a new um, group that's, that's come out and doing like really amazing stuff. So just in terms of what, Israel has to offer for the world in terms of technology for uh, climate tech. And I also like the way that structured, have a look through their website um, and they've sort of like really um, sort of categorized the different areas of planet tech as they've coined it. And, and it's really worth taking a look at and, and like thinking about how we could support this deeper. It's a nonprofit, but like uh, you know, it's it, it's it's doing um, supporting the Thanks, ecosystem Gil. for the technology and planner. Go Thanks, ahead. Gil. I, I just wanted to let everybody know how wonderful a consultation with Gil can be. You know, I spent a lot of time with him at the JFN conference. I thought it would be a half hour. It was more <laughs> like an hour and a half, but but also helped me to think about how we might integrate environmental concerns into the areas that we are already working on, especially access to opportunity for you know, low-income low populations. And this helped to result, as I think Yossi just posted in the comment, we made a small grant to support um, conversion of, of schools in unrecognized Bedouin villages from diesel to solar power. We, Mirage and Blaustein funded uh, a one school demonstration and the government of Israel has put, picked this up and made a commitment um, to convert the other schools in the sector, which will both help improve community health, but also do a lot, do something at least to mitigate climate change. So, so thank you, Gil, and thank you. At the end of the day, it's about you doing what I think, uh, you know, listening and doing things, so thank you for picking up on it. Um, any other more sharing that you wanna share? Um, okay, thanks uh, for your comments. Uh, I think this is only, you know, these kind of sessions, the Zooms, it's really sparking the conversation. We can't cover it all. There are many, many initiatives. There are many things happening, especially now. And also there are many internal conversations that are happening that we're happy to be part of. So thank you for uh, being here, caring, listening, sharing. And I invite you really to continue this conversation in other channels that we have. So I move now back to you, Sigal.
Thank you. Uh, thank you, and thank you for the excellent work. There are other good remarks about the, the consultations with you. And um, we're well aware that we have many of the funders here in Israel, but we're also aware that many of you are based outside of Israel and that most of the Green Funders Forum is targeted towards Israel, but we do try to take a global look on a lot of the initiatives that are taking place and opportunities for collaboration, not only focused on Israel. As we did last year, we're gonna have a session on climate during the conference in Arizona. Um, we opened, uh, um, you can start getting information about the conference as it evolves and inviting all of you to attend the conference in Arizona in March of 23 and attending the session. We're probably gonna have a less formal breakfast one of the mornings of the conference to explore opportunities to have a similar um, GFF initiative locally based in the US to help cater to the needs of the funders who are based in North America and not necessarily in Israel. And of course, do things in collaboration and mutual programs across the board. It's not gonna be a separate initiative, but we wanna be able to cater to your needs wherever you are based and wherever your funding is based. And we know it's not only in Israel. Um, a second thing that I wanna mention is that on October 31st, for those of you who are in Israel or will be visiting Israel, we have for the third time, we'll be having the Israeli Philanthropy Conference. It's not focused on climate or environment but it's a general event for the philanthropic community that's in Israel. And it's an amazing opportunity to come together as a community and meet each other. So I encourage any of you who will be in Israel and want to attend, if you don't have the link, just email us after and we'll send it to you so you can register. And it's going to be a great event. As Gil mentioned, we have the Climate March um, a few days before that here in Israel, which you're also um, invited to attend and take part in that march. And we wanna make sure we continue this as an open conversation, that you continue to see us as an address with ideas you have, with um, um, eagerness to collaborate. If you want us to put you in touch with other funders, if you want consultation, and we're gonna be much more vocal and dominant and uh, present with programming, with site visits, with content throughout the year, both in person and via Zoom, in conferences and in between conferences. And we want this to be a breathing relationship that you feed us and we feed you. So feel free to continue to send things our way, what you care about, what you want to hear um, and, and what you wanna share. Um, we see this as a community and I think we can only try to tackle this mega challenge as a community. So thank you everyone for um, joining us tonight. We wanna to wish you all a Shana Tova, Happy New Year.